I am a visual artist based in Toronto, Canada. Over the past 15 years, my practice has been looking at museums specifically and how history has been narrated. And as an artist, I'm really curious about the blind spots uh, that the institutions create. So what's left out of the capture of history? What images and objects are not making it into these institutions? So my work inserts itself in those spaces. So as we know, museums have a very problematic history with how objects have been collected. Often in historical museums, the objects have a very dubious provenance, yet still, as a viewer, I'm really fascinated by these spaces and I, I still love going into museums. To me, there are these beautiful, focused, temple-like spaces. So I feel a, always a bit of a contradiction with having a love of museums, but knowing how these collections have been created. So what I've been trying to do here at Bemis is really try to understand how I can create a sort of internal archaeology. How can I evoke images and objects from my own mind's eye and present them as significant contributions? See, I did a meditation about a year ago where this onion appeared in my mind. And it was this unfurling onion where the layers and layers and layers just kept peeling open. And I thought coming to Bemis, it would be just a very specific solid object to focus on. You know, since I have access to mold making and, and ceramics, over my three months here, as I continued to cast and cast and cast, more onions, and I think I've probably made about 500. I began to understand what it was about. I think on one hand, it was really a meditation on an archive itself, that the onion is, it's so simple, but it's this tiny little packet of energy that represents time. It is an object that often evades the museum. It's something that we touch, that we eat, that we look at every day. It's, it's used in many cultures and cooking. It refuses to be captured by the museum or the museum overlooks it. As you'll notice how it's installed, it really nods to sort of museological conventions. I saw this stand and it, it had stone weights on the stand and I thought it was such a beautiful way of showing iterative objects. I'm learning something about the behavior of the clay, the capacity of the clay, how I could make the object look more fossil-like, more petrified. You kind of see my body working and making these decisions through the various iterations. So sometimes I think these iterative ceramics works I'm making are far less about the objects themselves but more about you know, a real recording of what my physical body was doing in the space over this span of time. And in this case, it was a very specific span of time, over three months um, here at Bemis. The second project I worked on here at Bemis was on a collection of artifacts I collected in the Gandhara region, which is the Buddhist, the ancient Buddhist area of Afghanistan and Pakistan. I had these photos with me at the residency and I wanted to work with them in relation to other objects. So what I did was I worked at the Union for Contemporary Arts on a scanner there and I choreographed these Gandharan artifacts alongside other artifacts that they had come in relation with. In museums, often we really separate and sanitize objects. We pull them out of their contexts. So this was a chance for me to reintroduce other objects alongside these ancient Gandharan artifacts. So in some images, you'll see the ham and cheese sandwich of the conservator start to mingle with this Gandharan Buddha head. So instead of 
really separating objects and histories. It was an acknowledgement of collaboration and cross-pollination, which I think is quite significant when we look at the study of history.